I said a few days ago on the channel that the Hyundai Kia Group would lose electric car sales in the United States. It's already begun to happen. Ford just overtook the group and Hyundai posted some surprisingly disappointing results for one of the world's best electric cars. Credit where credit is due though. Well done to Ford. They've now jumped up to second place in the United States. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Well, one company goes up, another one goes down. Unfortunately, the all-electric Hyundai Ioniq 5 has seen sales decline now for around six straight months in the United States. They've decreased almost every month since June. Last month, 1,191 vehicles were delivered. That's about 1.9% of Hyundai's volume in the US. It's lowest level since it was launched to the market. Of course, the reason for this is that the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 has caused a lack of eligibility for Kia and Hyundai's electric cars for the $7,500 federal tax credit. And Hyundai and Kia, they are not happy, but they must have known this was coming. They claim they didn't know, but surely you have to think. The American government is sponsoring, manufacturing our vehicles outside of America in, well, where, right? In South Korea, but they're not paying the credit isn't eligible for American-made cars, such as Tesla's EVs. Of the top 10 most American-made cars in America, Tesla has four of the top five positions. Tesla hasn't qualified for the EV tax credit. Rather than giving American consumers incentive to buy American EVs that are made in America, the American government has been paying for South Korean EVs to be made in South Korea. Obviously, surely Hyundai and Kia had to have known that that gravy train was going to stop at some point. They claim they had no idea. They were blindsided. They're angry about it. They, they Literally, they're saying they're angry about it. Frankly, I'm not buying that. But hey, where one loses, another one gains. And actually, I think this is a good thing. I think the balance of power needs to be restored to American manufacturing, especially when it comes to electric cars. Hyundai and Kia say, now say they will manufacture EVs in the future in the US, but they're a few years behind in the United States. Now, to be realistic here, that's their short-term goal. Their long-term goal is to become number one. They want to do that in 2025. Can that happen? Well, I guess it could. Anything could happen. Is it likely? I'd say probably not, but it could happen. You never know. <laughs> what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Ford said its share of the EV segment was 7.4% in November, which is up by 5.7% from the same time in 2021. From January through November, Ford reported sales of 53,752 EVs in the United States. That's a pretty decent number. I am curious though, Americans, can you answer this question for me? Because I really don't know the answer. How does Ford know? How do they know they have 7.4% market share in November when we haven't seen sales figures from Tesla? Nobody has that information yet. So how do they know this? I'm, I'm baffled by this. I mean, this is what Ford has reported. This is what Automotive News has reported. Tesla Riders reported. Everyone's reporting that this is fact. Is it fact or is this Ford guesswork? That's what I think it is. Now, Ford do know Hyundai sales. We've seen Ionic 5 sales for November. So we know that those sales have gone down, right? We know Ford's EV sales have gone up. But how do they know what Tesla sales were? I mean, surely you'd have to know what Tesla sales were to know what percentage your EVs are as a percentage of the market. Maybe there's something I'm missing, but I want to know what that is. Ford's beating out Hyundai, though, follows the South Korean automaker's loss of incentives that gave its customers those tax credits. And Ford said they've crossed a milestone of producing 150,000 all-electric Mustang Mach-E's around the middle to towards the end of November. By the way, Elon Musk did tweet his congratulations to Ford. I've got a lot of respect for when CEOs do that kind of thing. There's no need to do what some companies do and some executives do, but just slagging off the competition. I don't think that really helps anyone. So I like it when people do that. I saw that congratulations and Jim Farley responded saying, thanks Elon. So that's kind of cool. I think Elon Musk and Jim Farley have a pretty healthy level of respect for each other. And I like to see that. Interestingly though, 
When Farley tweeted, he said, congratulations to our team on building 150,000 Mustang Mach-E's. He added that Ford will make the Mach-E available in 37 countries. Aussies, Mustang Mach-E is coming to Australia. It's coming to 37 countries and we're one of them. So yeah, despite the fact that Consumer Reports downgraded the EV and said that you shouldn't buy it, I don't agree. I think it's actually a good car. That's my personal take though. Let me know your thoughts. Would you give the Mustang Mach-E a buy or not buy rating? Let me know in the comment section. So Ford's sales are actually up 102.6% compared to last year, and they're up 33.34% compared to September. That's some damn good results. Of the 6,255 total electric vehicle sales, the Mustang Mach-E represented 3,539, or 56% of Ford's EV sales. The mach -E is doing the lion's share of the work for Ford here. Hopefully, F-150 Lightning pickup trucks can be ramped because, I mean, obviously Ford have hundreds of thousands of orders for that vehicle. But the question is, how fast can they ramp if they're not making a profit? And which I suspect they're not. Ford have admitted they don't make a profit on their EVs. So the question is, how much of a loss do they make or do they make a loss? And if they do, can they ramp quickly? I don't know. No one really knows. Ford hasn't disclosed that information. However, the F-150 was second to the Mach-E in terms of Ford Group EV sales, selling 2,062 units, 32% of EV sales. That means if you order a Ford F-150 Lightning now, based on Ford's current production, you'd be waiting until about 2047 to get your car. So unless Ford really start ramping up fast, then yeah, that wait list is going to get longer and longer. It's never going to end. Do I think that Ford will get on top of it within the next two years? No, I don't. Actually, not at all. Zero chance. Huge demand for this vehicle. For good reason, it's a good pickup truck. It's EV. There's not a whole lot of EVs being made. But will they eventually, by probably you know the end of the decade? Yeah, by then, I think they will. Other electric trucks or other electric vehicles that Ford sold during November, the e-transit, which dominates the commercial van market, even though it's a very small market right now, it'll get bigger as time goes on very quickly. They sold 654 of those in November, maintaining an electric van market of 80%. So as you can see, the market is only about 900 cars per month. That's going to ramp massively. Now, here's the interesting thing. Ford has said it has lost buyers because it had its iPhone moment. That's what they said. Jim Farley said our iPhone moment. Their iPhone moment was realizing when they went, oh, actually everyone wants EVs. And they said that, that happened only about six months ago for the company. And at the same time, they admitted that part of the reason they had that moment is because so many buyers have left. Um, you know, the, really, the reality is Ford just haven't made enough electric cars to satisfy demand. So a lot of buyers have left and bought Teslas or bought other EVs. However, 60% of customers who buy Ford's EVs come from other brands, particularly from Toyota and Honda. Do Toyota and Honda have a future in the United States, you know, post 2030? I don't think they do. I think they're going to be very small niche players in the American market. They're big now, really big now. People are not going to see it. Nokia, here we go. I see it happening. Toyota becomes Nokia in the US, something like that. Kodak maybe even possibly. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching, my friends. Have a great day. Bye-bye.